Welcome to Douchebag Remo. Wait, that was the other show that we did, huh? Dupo Remo. You know, if we say Dupo Remo enough times, it will start to sound like a word. Or wait, no, it's the opposite of that. When you say a real word enough times, it starts to not sound like a real word. Yeah, did you ever do that where you're like you trying to make up episode art or something like that? And you type in the words and then you look at them and you're like... That can't be right. That's, that's not how you spell it, is it? Catastrophe. That can't be wrong. Oh, Cat- how do you spell it? And then you check the spell check and stuff. That's right. It claims it's, it's right, but it, it, oh, there's kind of no a, way. That happens to me a lot. Never has happened to me. Good. And I know that we've been talking for a long time, but let me finish with this. About a year and a half ago, no, it was about a year ago exactly, you and I were sitting in this exact room and I was telling you about the bonus feature that was on the Star Trek 2009 movie. Oh, that was two years ago. DVD or Blu-ray or whatever it was. And one of the writers of the film, or maybe it was both writers of the film, were sitting together and they were talking about when they were first writing the story of this movie. One of them said, I had in the back of my mind two goals. One of the goals was to write the best Star Trek movie that I could. But the other was make something that my wife would go to with me. And the other was like, oh, yeah, you're totally, totally right. And we kept talking about that the whole time. It's like we got to put more and more and more into this so that our wives would go to the premiere with us. And I was f-ing horrified by this. <laughs> we were in this room and I was like, what kind of monstrous c- are you married to? You made this movie and they won't go to the premiere with you. What the hell? <laughs> and I think you were just like. I'm sure it was a joke or why are you making such a big deal about this? And I was just, what a horrible, horrible thought that you spent eight months of your life writing something or three years of your life and your wife won't go with you. She's, she's ashamed to know you or whatever. <laughs> anyway, I cut that out of the podcast where we were talking about it because I was afraid, you know, I was using the C word and stuff like that. It might be offensive. I, who knows? Yeah. Some people are offended by the C word. Yeah. Some people won't go to a movie if the C word is in the title. <laughs> They're missing out. <laughs> I have at least 60 movies yeah. with the in the title. <laughs> Anyhow, I cut that out, but it just, I, I thought of that. Women really hate science fiction that much that just the mention that it is science fiction is enough to keep them away. And that's really hard for me to get my head around, but people on the forums have said that they've pretty much reiterated that exact it's true fact. And, and, and I hate to use the word fact. I would have used opinion. You know, I've had it mentioned by several independent research groups, but people <laughs> on the, the, somebody on the forum said that they tried their darndest to get their girl friends to listen to the dude, Steve. And as soon as they find out that it's speculative fiction, they're like, sorry, not for me. no, you and I can no longer be friends. <laughs> and there was one of them, and I don't know if it's Bree, I don't know if it's Carolyn. It's one of those people that said, I said to my friend, if you just give it a chance, you'd like it. I know you'd like it because I know your tastes. I know your likes. And she wouldn't even give it a chance. That to me is really daunting and really depressing. Yeah, it's hard to get around. All this talk about that makes me wonder. I mean, we love science fiction and maybe we love it because we're men. I don't know. You know, Star Wars appealed to an awful lot of people, including me and you, when we were little. And I think that kind of really launched us along that path. It seems like there's genres that appeal more to one sex than to the other. Like Westerns certainly don't appeal to women either, I I believe. Not that it matters anymore. Right. I mean, they don't appeal to anybody anymore. Most people (laughs) just don't care. They just appeal to me. You know, like cop shows are big time... uh, action flick kind of movies much more appeal to men whereas then you got your chick flick as they call it your uh, romantic comedy your uh, plain old romance you know those kind of things uh, appeal more to women what well, I'd like my sister loves to watch the rape of the week version <laughs> of law and order she loves to watch the the SVU about a child being molested, about a kid's dick getting cut off, about 
somebody being sold into sexual servitude at the age of seven or, you know, a woman that has raped by nine men in a row, you know, these things. And that is a total mystery to me. Not not a mystery. There's There's got to be a stronger word to that. Three-fourths of these special victims are women. Uh-huh. And yet she watches this for entertainment. Right. Who's the real monster here? <laughs> yeah. and, and, you know, those lifetime things that I complain about all the time. But it's always that sort of stuff. It's always a woman that's wronged. It's always a woman that's effed over or beaten or raped or abused or mistreated or lied to or tricked or, or you know, all these awful things that happen to women. I it's it's the opposite of if there was a sh- a channel for men that was always about guys winning the football game or guy winning the marathon or guy coming out on top and you know he's like, oh it's his struggles from rags to riches it's the opposite of that I don't know why that would appeal to folks but yeah I don't know it seems like these days I mean you don't see a whole lot of straight romances for one in movies doesn't happen much except for a, a Nicholas Sparks books that get made into films. That's about all you get. Or sometimes you get a period romance. Yeah. You know, you get something, although I guess, you know, anything Jane Austen, I guess, you sort of. Okay. But that I would say, think more of as a uh, literary film than a romance. Okay. But uh, yeah, you don't get many romance. You get about as many romances as you get Westerns. I mean, it's one of those kind of. Things where people still read romances, but they don't make movies of them much. You basically, it seems like the only genre there is that's a woman genre is romantic comedies. And then it seems like all the rest of the genres are aimed at men or or at least appeal to men more. Okay, well, and there's two reasons for that. One, men are so bad that they rule with an iron fist. <laughs> Or two, men are the ones that are making movies. So, you know, it's, it's either men are bad or men are the ones making movies. I don't, I, I don't know. But, you know, a movie like The Help, where all, pretty much the whole cast are women. Uh-huh. Did really well. That wasn't a romantic comedy. What was that? That would be... Was that just a drama? A movie yeah. like Beaches or something like that? Yeah. That's a drama. It's a drama. It's a period drama, basically. And wouldn't you say that a, a drama appeals more to women than... than uh, I guess you could say that. It's hard to say because usually there's a something. There's a word before drama. Right. There's, there's a courtroom drama. There's a historical drama. There's a period drama. There's a... Maybe it's because women are the ones that have periods, so they like period dramas. <laughs> no, I, yeah, I don't know. Um, I did not know that. <laughs> to be continued next time. That Gets My Goat is produced under a Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives license. <laughs> there you go. Pretty good, right? Oh, hey, let's do one where we both say it. Okay. That's pretty gay, you know. <laughs> I was just about to invite you to go have a sword fight with me on the snow. <laughs> oh, my. You, sir. <laughs> <laughs>